Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Block Party Podcast. This is episode seven. I am Truth Blitz. And your boy Crypto Blood. And today we have Sean from SGT Report on. I love this guy. I love his movement, his channel. He's got over 300,000 subs, spreading truth across the internet. We talked to Sean about how he started his channel, how he got into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, and also what internet censorship means in the new age of blockchain technology so tune in people i think you guys will enjoy it and we out holla this the story of crypto blood and truth blitz ask them a cliff high what the truth is they was just talking about the blockchain that's when they heard janet yelling and the cops came they said give me all your bitcoin and lock aim then jamie dimon showed up and the shots rained so they hopped in the Lambo and took off fast. Welcome to the Block Party Podcast. Okay, we're going to get uh, Sean from SGT Report in on the show. Sean, how are you? Are you there? Yeah, guys, I'm here. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks, Sean. Guys, I'm sure you all know who Sean from SGT Report is. The guy has like 300,000 subs. I've got his website on the screen right now, sgtreport.com. You can follow him on Twitter as well, SGT Report. Sean, thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, guys, my pleasure. I've been a friend of Nick's for a while now, and uh, I'm very pleased to be a friend of yours now, too, Crypto Blood. I'm a fan of your uh, perspective on things. And, uh, you know, we're kind of being thrown under the bus, I feel like, by the powers that be with this whole crypto thing right now. So we can talk about that. But uh, I'm real glad to be on your show, guys. Yeah, man. Excellent. Thank you. And that, that means a lot to me. I've been following you for some time. I mean, I've known about you for years. Uh, you started, what, uh, in 2008? Yeah, I put up the YouTube channel in like 2007, and it just had an innocuous name, which were my initials, SGT Bull, and then I had to pick a number, 07, because uh, evidently SGT Bull wasn't available, and mm -hmm. I never dreamed it would turn into anything, or perhaps I would have you know, picked a better name, uh, you know, a more branded, you know, cool, catchy <laughs> name, you know, like... <laughs> Truth Stream Media is a good one. I love those guys. But yep. you know what? It started as a labor of love, mm -hmm. and uh, I was doing it on the side. I was an executive at Target Corporation in the marketing department, directing commercials for them. Um, and uh, I did that for about 10 years, and I was doing this YouTube stuff on the side, trying to speak out against tyranny. Mm -hmm. And it just slowly, 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 and people need to understand this about YouTube. Just do it. Do what you love and do it over time and it'll grow, but it takes a long, long time. To and do it, it consistently, and, right? That's the key. Yeah, that is the key. And, yeah. uh, yep. you know, it, you got to be consistent and you got to have a consistent voice. I mean, you can change your opinions on things, but right. you have to be true to yourself. That's the key. People want, um, what would the word be? Authenticity. Right. That's what they don't get from CNN and MSNBC and the exactly. rest of this garbage. They don't get any authenticity. That's why YouTube is so popular, even with kids now. Cable TV is dying yeah. because people would prefer to sit around and watch YouTube or Netflix and you know all these others. Right. But YouTube is really, really become a very seriously huge venue, and it's stealing a lot of advertising revenue from you know the old legacy media. And thank mm -hmm. God. Right. Thank I'd like God. to right. start, yeah. starve those bastards out. Mm -hmm. and, and we're going to talk about a little in, in a little bit about how uh, conservative and libertarian voices are being silenced and squashed by YouTube uh, and and some possible solutions to that because it is a massive platform I mean that is where many people go to get to get their news to find out the real story on things not the scripted uh, agenda well I actually have some good news to share uh, I don't know when you guys are posting this but uh, I have a contact at one of these MSMs uh, MSNs or uh, they call them MCNs multi-channel networks uh, Jordan Sather his channel has just been restored and enter the stars uh, that channel's just been restored because of Excellent. this guy that I know at this MCN. He's been working behind the scenes to get those restored. He's trying to help Mike Adams get his channel restored. So, mm. you know, these fascist pigs just take down channels mm -hmm. arbitrarily and right. don't tell people why. They can flag you for anything, and you don't know what the problem was. I, I'll tell you what, too. When it comes to a guy like Mike Adams... You know, there's no hate speech happening there. The guy talks right. about nutrition and GMOs and the dangers of vaccines. And he talks about, I mean, he's an alternative to the, the, the mockingbird, you know, lies. And they took him down. 
Right. He took his channel down. And what recourse does he have? Yeah, I, exactly. And my uh, my wife follows uh, Mike Adams in Natural News, as do I. Um, but she's more into the the health side of things, and she follows that closely. So you know, it's a it's a big blow when YouTube takes down channels such as his or, or any channels because really what it is is whatever your viewpoint is you shouldn't be silenced um you know even if it's a view that i agree with they have a first amendment right to to freedom of speech and freedom of the press and uh it's it's not right what youtube and these social media platforms are doing yeah well one of these uh quotes i learned when i was in college and you know i got a journalism degree was this idea, this quote that and it was one of the, I believe, Supreme Court justices back in the day who said, though I may disagree with what you say, I will defend to the death your right to say it, because exactly. that's how it works mm, in right. a constitutional republic. You cannot curb free speech. Mm -hmm. uh, but evidently, YouTube feels like they can because it's their platform. But you know what? I don't think legally they can get away with doing this arbitrarily. You know, mm -hmm. you can't curb conservative or libertarian speech. You can't fascistly ban speech like that, but embrace leftist speech. For instance, you can't ban pro-life speech on YouTube while embracing um, pro-abortion speech. Mm -hmm. I think that would be constitutionally struck down. I don't think that's legal. So I know that uh, anti-schools Isaac Green is uh, working on a class action lawsuit uh, against YouTube, and they deserve to be sued. You know, right. this really deserves to be sued. I just hope that if it went as high as the Supreme Court, that we have honor honorable justices who would, uh, you know, defend the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. You know, the First Amendment is our second most important right. The first most important right is the Second Amendment, which is our right to, you know, keep and bear arms. Right. Because without that, I agree. just take away all our rights. Right, and that's under attack as well. And, uh, you know, it, it, it paints a bigger picture of, you know, what the elitists want for us. You, you know, they want they want us disarmed. So, and I talked about this in a, in a video on my alternative non-blockchain channel last night about how these children are being weaponized. And, and uh, you know, I think what it is is if enough people woke up to the things that the elites and the lawmakers are getting away with in this country, uh, the last thing they want is for us to be awake and armed. 100% mm -hmm. right. Yep. Yeah. So, so you talk about what we've been talking about, this truth community, right? And to kind of tie in cryptos, uh, Sean, why do you think there's such a big divide in the truth community with cryptos and those who oppose it? Like what I think I think we're on the same side. Isn't that right? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, you know, I think it's a it's a spiritual question for a lot of people. A lot of people are very um nervous about and have been keeping their eyes open for the elites mark of the beast system mm -hmm. which i think we all thought for a long time was going to be a chip of some sort it probably still would be some sort of micro tiny teeny tiny chip you know they're getting these things so small and powerful now that there will come a point where they're going to probably try to convince new parents to chip their babies you know mm -hmm. to help prevent human trafficking you know you mm -hmm. help prevent kidnapping it'll always yeah. be done you know on behalf of the kids and they're going to sell the system but you know others uh have been alarmed that the crypto space and bitcoin maybe specifically is part of this you know beast system that's rolling out that you know ultimately will be controlled by the bankers because you know the the message of freedom monetarily has always been let's return to honest money physical gold and physical silver, back the dollar with tangible assets, blah, blah, blah. You know, So I think that um, people just have a, a healthy dose, dose of skepticism. However, a lot of people have thrown the baby out with the bathwater because they really haven't done any research and they don't fully understand crypto. So I can sort of see both sides mm -hmm. you know, of the story. Right. And I, I, I actually, I can as well. And I've talked about, um, you know, blockchain itself the technology uh, i actually did a video yesterday on on a company that i just discovered uh where what they are setting out to do is is a little bit scary to me and i'll talk about it and the company is called faceiter and they're using blockchain technology and let me bring up the article here um so Faceter states they are the first decentralized surveillance system for consumers. Their aim is to create a smart surveillance system 
using their established computer vision technology that is actually affordable and available for mainstream use. It's powered by Fog Network of Miners on a blockchain platform by combining features such as facial recognition and object detection. Faceter claims that their surveillance technology will be able to understand a situation as it's unfolding. And they go on to say, uh, this is their event security model by detecting possible threats ahead of crimes being committed much more efficient action can be taken. So we're talking about essentially predictive policing. And, you know, that is something I don't agree with because they're saying it's powered by artificial intelligence and their algorithms. So how hard would it be to be able to use their facial recognition to tie that in with, for example, social media, where people put everything about themselves willingly on social media, their political beliefs, their, their for example, uh, belief in the Second Amendment. So... You know, I, I made the, the case when I made my video, so what happens if I'm walking down the street because I got into some arguments, so I have a, a, an angry expression on my face, and they zoom in on that and then pull my data from my social media and find out that I'm pro-Second Amendment and pro-Constitution, so am I going to get SWAT teamed? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I've got a real-world example for you of that happening recently, right? It is essentially a case of predictive Policing, and by the way, Hollywood um, predicts all of this. They put out this predictive programming earlier, you know, much much earlier than when the technic. Yeah, so yeah. look back at 2002's Minority Report with right. Tom Cruise, mm. directed by Steven Spielberg, yeah. and at that point, if you look at the technology that was really pretend, they, I mean, it's graphic arts in that movie, but you know, the touch screens that he's flipping through on the big mm. transparent screen and all that, all that stuff didn't exist then. Mm. But it's really in existence now to a large degree. And this predictive policing is rolling out planet-wide, and they're using it right now to curb speech that mm -hmm. they find dangerous. So what just happened to Brittany Pettibone when she traveled to the UK? She right. was detained for three days because they didn't want her to give a speech. Wow. Now, how incredibly insane is that? And it definitely is a case of predictive policing because they would have... look. She's she's not a danger to anybody, but the powers that be behind the scenes must have been doing some legwork to monitor her, and as right. she entered the country, she was detained because right. they didn't want her to speak. And so it's very scary. The UK, man, you want to talk about Orwell's big brother, right. mm -hmm. you know. It's it's Orwell on steroids already here there in the UK, and I think per capita, the United Kingdom has more cameras uh, on public streets than anywhere in uh, anywhere in the world, and they have yeah. no guns. <laughs> no, right? So yeah, there's, a, there's a theme here. I said that in, in my video. They that you can't be anywhere in public in the UK without being on camera. Yeah. It's uh, it's insane, and I think to a large degree, mostly what it is now, and I'm sure they're transitioning, but it's it's people sitting behind in a big control room watching all these screens. Yeah. But just imagine, you know, or the, even if they're not. Even if it's, uh, you know, what, what we found out with the PRISM um, program with the NSA, they're just collecting all of this data. And so they can go back and, and data mine and find out things about us uh, in the future. So it, it's, it goes both ways, in my opinion. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it is it's a scary thought. And that is, to me, one use and you know as i said they're tying this in now with blockchain and that that is one thing that you know to me would be a negative use but on the same on the other side of the coin is is there are positive use to blockchain let's get back to that the topic of voices being censored predominantly conservative and libertarian voices from youtube anybody who's speaking out against the mainstream narrative and the mainstream agenda um and blockchain is a solution to that or or can be and i know we have platforms such as steam it which is not widely ad adopted yet uh but i feel it will be and just that the the idea that this technology is censor proof you can't censor the blockchain so you know they cannot go back and delete somebody's videos or content if it was on the blockchain and, uh, and I think that might be, if we don't win in the courts when it comes to YouTube and the social media, I think that um, blockchain is and will be the solution. Yeah, I think that, you know, really, man, if you look at it, you look through history, you know, a lot of things that have been implemented by 
different civilizations, different governments, they all normally start off um, honest and, and pure and they have a, a, a good intention, right? Mm. But it always gets corrupted. And I think that, you know, my thing with Bitcoin and, and blockchain and everything, it's I don't believe that it is currently... Uh, what, well, I, don't, I will say it like this. I don't believe that they disseminated this technology to us. I think it was either stolen from a program or, or something like that. But I think that because it's open source, I don't think in, that a government would actually put something out that's open source. You know, that yeah. can be replicated and, and utilized and, and basically forked and, and, and done some, you know, something else done with it. But I do think that eventually blockchain um, cryptocurrencies will become corrupted by the governments, the central banks and such. So, it's, you know, we've got to stay on it regarding what the real cause or, or not cause, but the real use case for cryptocurrencies uh, were meant to be. And it was to get away from big government. And I think that yeah. the truth or community, really, we need to come together. Um, and, and unite and really fight against this. Yeah, I, I agree. Take on that, Sean? Well, you know, I don't disagree. I just think that the battle that needs to be fought is the battle that people uh, like Mike Adams and Isaac Green, anti-school, and the rest of us need to fight, which is the battle of maintaining our free speech. Because, make no, make no mistake about it, we are at war with the fascist left in these corporations. Mm -hmm. This is a war. Because, you know, keep in mind that if Hillary Clinton had gotten into the White House, there would be no stopping their agenda. Because right. the people that stand opposed to us use obfuscation. Mm -hmm. They lie, they cheat, they steal, they run hit teams, they murder. Look what happened to Seth Rich. You know, mm -hmm. Kim.com has said Seth Rich was the WikiLeaks uh, leaker. Uh, he provided the DNC emails to WikiLeaks. He's willing to talk to Robert Mueller on the on the record. He's reached mm -hmm. out twice via his, att his attorneys, and Mueller doesn't want to talk to him. So, these people are aligned against truth, and they will use anything, any means at their disposal um, to well, look, thank God Hillary didn't get into the White House. I think mm -hmm. we've got a reprieve here, and the battle that needs to be waged is the battle for truth and free speech. Because you guys have heard of ethnic cleansing. What's going on right now on YouTube and across you know, the media sphere is speech cleansing, mm -hmm. right? I, yep. Look, I've got, a, I've got a post at sgtreport.com uh, right here today. A uh, kid says, I got kicked out of class for saying there's two genders. And he tells yeah, the I saw tells that. He tells story <laughs> to Tucker Carlson. Mm -hmm. So it's complete madness, and again, it goes back to Orwell's 1984. The goal in that book was to reduce speech to, you know, by 90%. Reduce mm. the number of words that people can use by like 90%, right? To get yeah. everybody to use the approved Big Brother language. Because then we don't have language. If they can destroy our language and destroy speech, then we can't communicate. And that's exactly what they want. They literally want to dumb us down. But worse than that, you guys... I, uh, in my uh, video, The Enemy is Inside the Gates, I played a clip from Larry Grothwall, the Weather mm. Underground infiltrator, yep. who said they want to re-educate people, and those that couldn't be re-educated would be put into camps, and by their own estimates, they would have to terminate, kill 25 million people. Now, mm. it was Bill Ayers, who was one of the founders of the Weather Underground. Bill Ayers, buddies with Barack Obama, he's tight with Hillary Clinton, so... Everybody needs to understand how fortunate we are that that witch didn't get into the White House. Mm -hmm. So the real battle, and I hope blockchain can help us, but the real battle is to defend the First Amendment. It yeah. has to be defended. It has to be protected. Because if they can destroy our free speech, if they can take, uh, take away our ability to communicate, they will eventually win. Right. And that's, you know, it, it's unfortunate that Google is essentially the most powerful company in the world. Uh, you know, they have no doubt a monopoly on the Internet. And then any small company that tries to come out, they'll just buy them up. Um, so it is it's it is it's, I it's guess a scary the, thought. The great thing about blockchain, you know, it, it's decentralized. It's it's um, no one person has it. So they, they couldn't go buy a decentralized platform. You know what I mean? 
So I think we we are going in the right direction. But I do want to I did want to make a point about um, the gender thing. My daughter, she's uh she's actually a Girl Scout, right? And we get a notice a few weeks ago saying that she next year they will have um, both genders in the Girl Scout. Oh, God. yeah, yeah. So now uh, boys can join. And it'll be kind of a co-ed type of thing with the Girl Scouts. And I, I told my wife, and she agreed with me. She said, we're taking her out next yeah. year. Like, this, it, there's no, I, I don't understand. It's getting to the point, man. I'm getting so pissed about this stuff that um, it, it really is crazy. Well, it's, a, it's an assault on Christian values, though. I mm-hmm. mean, let's be clear here. And every time I put up a video, and I don't say Jews, 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 right. I get the, the bashers coming out saying, I'm a shell because I won't point the finger at the one group responsible for all of this. Look, I know the story of Israel. I know about the Balfour Declaration. I know how the Rothschilds hijacked this whole story. I look, it's Zionism that's the problem. It's right. not Jews. I have friends who are Jews. Yeah, they don't too. all yeah. understand this grand plan, right? Mm-hmm. And they're not all. They don't all hate Christians. But I do firmly believe that this Zionist agenda is to target Christ. It's look. It's really to pit Christianity and the Muslim, uh, the Muslims, Christians versus Muslims mm-hmm. against each other. Mm-hmm. And to send us all over the world fighting these illegal wars of aggression. So, I, you know, I just think it needs to be said, this is spiritual warfare. These mm-hmm. people want to destroy all societal norms. And yeah. that's why you can't go to college now and say, look, there's only two genders. You may feel that somehow you're on the spectrum, mentally speaking. But physically speaking, there are only two genders. That that's is right. scientific fact. And if they can destroy scientific fact by destroying our speech and our freedom to have dialogue and discourse, then they win. And that's right. what they won. Yeah, I, I, it's funny. I, I live on the campus of a huge uh, liberal arts university. And uh, I remember they made the announcement a couple of years ago that, I think it was maybe a year and a half, two years ago, that they were going to be allowing females into fraternities <laughs> <laughs> so you know it's been happening for oh some time God, now bro. and they yeah so <laughs> it's uh yeah. it is it's it's an attack on uh, i i i fully believe and uh agree with what you said um and it's it's insane let me can i ask you guys something if we just circle back to cryptos quick though i do sure. have a question for you um Cliff High mm-hmm. has long predicted, right, that, and I always thought it was January, 13,000 Bitcoin, but I guess it was February of this year. And he's he's been on the mark in so many other ways for so long that a lot of people had a lot of, uh, let's just say, maybe put all their eggs in the Cliff High basket, right. believing that, you know, we're really going to see $100,000 Bitcoin this summer, etc. Um, how do you guys feel about that prediction being so off base, number one, and number two, I asked uh, Cliff personally via email if the Bitcoin futures were going to destroy Bitcoin. He said, no, they're going to screw the pooch with that one. But ever mm-hmm. since those damn Bitcoin futures have launched, look at the chart. It's just down, 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 just like they've done to silver and gold. And you can see when they hit it. You know, I think I saw a chart the other day. They hit it at 11 a.m. a lot. Um, so what's the truth about Bitcoin futures and what's the truth about uh, the future for Bitcoin? Are we going to ever see 13888? Yeah, so I used to trade futures, um, and so I kind of understand from a more technical standpoint how that works, man. And um, I don't think at this current moment, the way the futures contracts are set up, that they are manipulating it in any meaningful way. Uh, the volume yeah, they're cash. Just, they're cash settled, right? They're cash settled, so they don't even they don't even really correlate at all with Bitcoin. So they don't need to go buy or sell Bitcoin to cl- close these. Uh, these contracts but i do think this is a mechanism that they kind of set up for future heavy manipulation like they they've done with silver and gold and other precious metals so currently i don't think that it it, it is manipulated in that way directly with futures but it is coming for sure ladies and gentlemen i hope you enjoyed episode seven part one of the block party podcast with sean from sgt report jump over to the block party podcast official channel to see part two uh it'll only be up on that channel so make sure you guys get on there and subscribe to see part two peace